Hi, my name is David P. Shapiro. I'm the owner and managing partner of the law office of David P. Shapiro, located in San Diego, California, where my firm helps good people regain control of their future when charged with a crime. This video, I want to talk to you about some news that came out of San Diego from the district attorney's office on Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. And that was the official announcement by the San Diego district attorney that they will not be charging uh, former San Diego State punter and former Buffalo Bills punter Matt Ariza and the other two individuals who were accused of sexually assaulting an underage female at a party in 2021. And that's pretty big news here for a couple of reasons. Primarily one, because of Ariza's stature, right? Well-known San Diego State football player, accoladed one of the greatest punters college football has ever seen, gets drafted by the Buffalo Bills on a good team, and then these sexual assault allegations come to the public light after he's already a member of the Bills, the Bills eventually release him and a criminal investigation sort of gets relaunched after it appeared it was really going nowhere fast until there was a civil accusation, a civil case filed, and then sort of the district attorney got involved again, potentially, uh, to look to see what, if anything, they were going to file against Matt Ariza and or the other two young men accused of sexually assaulting this, this underage female. And a couple of things were in play, you know, going back to the original accusation, the issue was first, were, was there or were there any sexual acts, right? Was there a sexual encounter between the two, Ariza and the female? That's the first real fundamental thing. What could be proven? Did something happen? It seems like by his own admission or by his own people's admission that there was some sort of physical encounter between the two that night or at that party or around that time. Then the issue was, was it forceful or was it consensual in the sense of non-forceful, right? And then the other issue was, well, even if it was quote-unquote consensual, would it still be a crime if she was, in fact, under the age of 18 and if there was reasonable belief that she was under the age of 18? And that's really probably where the case hinged on as far as the district attorney's thought process is because they're releasing statements along the lines of, we don't believe this case could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt at trial, and they were not going to be able to or they believe they were not going to be able to secure a conviction. So I commend them in that regard for not filing a case against an individual, whether it's Matt Ariza, whether it's you know somebody who has no name recognition or, or somewhere in between, by not filing a case against someone who they do not believe they could prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Ariza is factually innocent. He might be, he might not be. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's not some evidence that may carry the weight uh, of a civil burden of proof, but certainly for a criminal case, the district attorney elected not to file criminal charges against Ariza or any of the other two individuals that we know of that were under investigation. So I think it's important to look at it from this that there was a forceful rape, at least one that could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt in criminal court. And then the other issue is, was there a statutory rape? And I think there were some conflicting reports, some conflicting investigation, depending on who you asked, about what age this accuser, the alleged victim in this case, was representing how old she really was, right? Was she letting everybody know that she was in high school and under 18, or was she purporting to be 18 or over? Because if she was purporting to be 18 or over, and Ariza, there's reasonable belief that he you know, knew about that, then it's not even a statutory rape under law unless they believe there was a forceful sexual act and there'll be a lot more serious charges. So very telling the district attorney did not file charges. They made an official announcement. Personally, I wish they would do this on all of our cases, you know, whether we represent someone like Matt Ariza and my firm does not, or whether we represent, you know, anyone, a blue collar worker, a college professor, a politician, whoever, it is important to not necessarily make those announcements to the media, but let the, the accused attorneys know that they are in fact not filing charges as opposed to what we get a lot of times, which is we haven't filed charges at this time. We could still file charges later on because the statute of limitations allows it. But it sounds like based on what the announcement they made today regarding Matt Ariza is that they've closed the book, they being the district attorney on prosecuting him based on the information they have. So, you know, in one regard, commendable for the prosecution not to file a case they do not believe they could prove. Not one of these situations where they're, oh, well, we'll charge somebody with a crime and, and maybe we'll get a plea deal, right? They didn't even file criminal charges against him. So hats off to them for that decision if they did not believe they could prove the case. I just wish there would be a lot more consistency 
in them coming out and at least letting the accused attorneys know, like they did in Arise's case publicly, that they're not going to file charges against every case that they're investigating for sexual assault because the impact on everyone's life who's accused of sexual assault, whether they did it, whether they didn't do it, or somewhere in between, is great. Whether you're an NFL football star, a college football star, or whether you're a blue-collar worker struggling to make ends meet and provide for your family. So that's the underlying message in this. You know, commendable in one regard, from a criminal defense attorney's perspective, what the district attorney did as it relates to you know, not filing a case that they believe they will not be able to prove uh, beyond a reasonable doubt in criminal court doesn't mean that the civil case isn't going to go uh, against Ariza, against the other individuals. Time will tell on that, but it looks like that the chapter of will this case be filed criminally against Matt Ariza and the other two former San Diego State football players is now been closed. So if you find yourself under investigation, sexual assault, if you want to talk about this case, any questions at all about you know, he said, she said, statutory rape, forcible rape, anything along those lines, particularly in San Diego County. We're just one phone call away. My firm could be reached at 619-295-3555. 619-295-3555.